Today we're taking a look at something a little bit different and that's the outdoor TV from Silvox. And this model here is the 55 inch Outdoor Pool Pro. Now you could of course mount any TV outside but it wouldn't be the best idea if it got wet. What sets this TV apart from indoor TVs is its IP55 water resistant, its anti-scratch and corrosion resistance, as well as an impressive 2000 nits of brightness for when you're watching it on the very sunny days. Now 2000 nits is actually incredibly bright when the average indoor TV is only around 6 to 700. So we'll go straight into the unboxing and as you can see when we take it out, it's a pretty big and bulky TV. Now that's because it's encased in a steel alloy with its anti-scratch and anti-corrosion coating. It feels incredibly durable and I've got no worries about damaging it. On the back, we've got a silicon sealant over the joints to stop the water getting in. And while this may deteriorate over very long periods of time, I don't think it's really an issue as you could easily reseal it yourself. And even if you're not the neatest with the silicon, no one's going to see it on the back anyway. Now we've also got some fan vents on the side and then all of the TV inputs are behind a panel on the rear. And we've got some foam at the bottom of this panel to squeeze against the wires and make them as water resistant as possible. Now because all of the ports are also facing downwards, then there's no worry about any water getting into any of the ports. In terms of the ports, we've got three HDMI ports and we've also got support for ARC. We've got two USB ports, a 3.5mm headphone, an optical out, an ethernet connection, an antenna connection and the power socket which takes a standard 3-pin power lead. So they've sent me the 55 inch Outdoor Pool Pro, the wall bracket and the soundbar and all in all it was pretty easy to set up and I've decided to mount this onto my garage wall so that I can use the garage for the electricity. For the TV bracket we just screw part of it onto the rear panel of the TV, we then mount the TV bracket onto the wall using the 5 fixings provided and then all you need to do is lift the TV onto the wall bracket, adjust it with the left and right swivel so that it's level and then screw the two fixings into the back of the TV to stop it moving. The soundbar also came with a few brackets so you can choose whichever one you prefer but I chose the bracket which attaches to the bottom of the TV so the soundbar always stays with it. The bracket allows the TV to sit nice and close to the wall and it can also be extended outwards as well as being swiveled so wherever you need the TV to point at it shouldn't be a problem. The bracket also feels very strong and sturdy so I've got no worries at all with this even when it's on full extension. Now we've also attached a sticky hook to the back and this is just to hide the power wires and keep them out of the way when it's fully pushed against the wall but still have that extra slack for when I want to pull it away. If we take a look at the picture, it's a 60Hz panel supporting 4K HDR. Thanks to the 2000 nits brightness, everything looks stunning. The specs don't actually list any HDR formats that are supported and from my testing I don't see it switching to any HDR modes either upon opening HDR content nor do I see any specific HDR in settings but we do have the option for wide color gamut. Now when watching movies, TV shows or just media on YouTube it looks incredible though. For picture modes we can select between standard, dynamic, movie, eco, gentle, vivid, sport and personal. Now personal is a custom mode and allows you to change things in the settings and fine tune the picture to your liking. You can turn the wide color gamut on or off but I'd suggest leaving this on auto and you can also adjust the backlight of the TV but considering this is an outdoor TV then I would always leave it on 100. We've also got more advanced settings and you can change things like color temperature and dynamic contrast. The anti-glare screen does seem to work pretty well and even when full sun is beaming down on the TV it's still perfectly watchable. Now it won't completely get rid of the glare altogether but the anti-glare combined with the high brightness of the panel really does make this suitable for outdoor use in the day. Under sound, we can turn the TV screen off if we only want the audio as well as selecting our output source for the TV. Now the TV's built-in speakers are okay. They do the job and they go loud enough but it does sound a little bit muffled if I'm honest. Now the soundbar however sounds great and it gives a nice sound. It sounds nice and balanced with enough bass and everything comes out loud and clear. The only thing to note however is that because of reflections it sounds much better when the TV's pushed up against the wall as opposed to when it's completely pulled out. So we'll just listen to the sound samples now. Timeline. Another universe. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Timeline. Another universe. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Another timeline. 
another universe. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? The soundbar is also an outdoor soundbar, and it comes with rubber bungs for any ports that you're not using to ensure water doesn't enter these ports. On the Android TV side, it runs well. Of course, it's the same as any Android TV, so we've got the recommendations and favorite apps on the homepage. We've then got the discovery page with plenty of suggestions, and then the apps page with all of your apps. When navigating through the menus, everything is nice and smooth. Occasionally, it can stutter from time to time, but this is mainly when it's loading things. But all in all, it does work well. The only thing I've had issues with is some apps not being in the Play Store for Android TV like BBC iPlayer, and then other apps like ITVX were there, but after installing them, it said they're not compatible with this device. Now, BBC iPlayer, I just set up by sideloading and it works perfectly. And ITVX currently isn't working, but I think that could be down to the new app and not the TV, because if I cast from a phone, then it does actually work. Now overall though, it works well and it's exactly what you'd expect from any Android TV. We've also got Widevine Level 1 certification, so this means if you use Netflix, it's going to work in full quality. And the TV comes with 10 gigabytes of internal storage, so plenty of space for all of your apps and games. Now we've also got the ability to tune in analog TV signals, digital TV signals and satellite, so you can happily enjoy your normal TV signal on top of all the apps. The TV also has Google Assistant built in, and this means that you can ask Google to open things on YouTube, for example. When you need to search for things, you can also use a voice search with the remote instead of typing. TT Technology YouTube. Here's what I found on YouTube. Disney Plus. The remote control is nice and easy to use. We've got a Google Assistant button. We've got shortcuts for popular apps like YouTube, Prime Video, and Netflix, as well as all of the numbers and navigation buttons that we'd expect from a TV remote. The TV remote works via infrared and Bluetooth, but you will need to connect via Bluetooth if you want to use things like Google Assistant and the voice search. All in all, I'm impressed with the 55-inch Pool Pro from Silvo, and I am enjoying it in my garden. When it comes to pricing, the 55-inch model that I've got here is 2739 on its own, 3238 with the soundbar, and then it's 3337 with the soundbar and the extendable wall bracket. Now these are of course high prices, but it's mainly down to the protection as well as the extreme brightness of the TVs. And as I've said a few times, if you're going to be watching it in sunlight, then the high brightness is required. They do have some partial sun outdoor TVs on their website that are cheaper. And these TVs are going to be fine in partial sun, but as they've only got a thousand nits of brightness, then I wouldn't recommend them if they're in full sun like I've placed here. So overall, I'm happy with the Silvox 55-inch Pool Pro TV, and it's working well for me in direct sunlight. It is, of course, a bit of a luxury product given its price, but we now spend the evenings outside watching TV and enjoying the sun instead of sitting in the house. Now, for those of you that want to check it out, though, I've placed the links down in the description below. And of course, if there's anything I've missed or you've got any questions at all, then just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.